I'm here with uh, Daniel Bonoff uh, with Good Partners here at uh, ACG uh, Deal Source. And uh, thank you very much for joining me, Daniel. Um, My pleasure. If you could start off with, tell me a little bit about Good Partners and uh, some of the areas you specialize in terms of investment. Sure. Um, Good Partners was founded in 2007 um, by my partners David Odie, uh, Joe Ferreira, and Ron Beagle. Um, we, uh, our first fund was $225 million, uh, and we're completely specialized on the consumer sector. Uh, when we talk about the consumer sector, it's really uh, a sub-focus on retail, restaurants, consumer packaged goods, food and beverage, and direct marketing. Um, we're not uh, venture guys and we're not turnaround guys, we're uh, growth equity investors. So. You know, what are some of the interesting opportunities that you're seeing right now in consumer um, on, over the next few months to year? Um, what are some of the hot sectors that you'd like to invest in? Sure. Um, we recently closed an investment in a uh, healthy organic bread company called Dave's Killer Bread, which was the result of a lot of uh, research that we had been doing in um, kind of the, the trends along the lines of being healthy and eating well right. and organic. Um, the company uh, is, is based in the Pacific Northwest, very exciting. Um, you know, the plan there is to take it uh, and distribute it nationally. Um, but we've been seeing a lot in that, um, you know, both as a result of our interest in that particular company, um, but, but, you know, uh, the, the goal is to get your product into Whole Foods and um, you know, get it into people's mouths. And um, so we've been looking at a lot of emerging brands um, kind of in that healthy organic space. Great. And um, what kind of, I'm assuming that the, in the environment right now, you would, would you say there's a dearth of quality candidates out there? And what kind of valuations are you seeing as a multiple of EBITDA, would you say? Sure. Um, it's gotten very competitive out there, particularly in the consumer sector. So um, there is a, there's always a dearth of really high quality companies, um, but in this particular market right now, there's a, a lot of equity on the sidelines, you know, chasing a, a smaller amount of deals. And the really, really quality assets, um, the ones that are being shopped around by the best investment banks, uh, are attracting a lot of interest. So. Uh, your question about the valuations, they're absolutely um, getting driven up right now. Um, you know, it depends on the sector, obviously, okay. but, um, uh, you know, two areas that we are spending a lot of time in right now, restaurants um, and uh, really food, um, you're talking uh, double-digit EBITDA multiples um, are far from being out of the question. They're more okay. becoming the norm. Is in terms of restaurants or, or in t terms of food trends, would you, would you say that the, the the growth sectors are limited to natural and organic. I mean, are there any other things out there that are, that are interesting, maybe even outside of the food space, um, that uh, you think are particularly attractive at this time? Or, you know, a lot. Uh, it's still food, but it's not human food. Um, pet food and pet um, okay. products We're, are. are uh, uh, Proven to be a fantastic growth segment right now, uh, attracting a lot of attention, and um, you know it's uh, there are really some exciting um, emerging companies in that space. Um, in kind of the fum human consumables, um, you know, there are a lot of interesting beverage companies out there. Um, at this event, they're doing uh, craft brewing. Um, there are a lot of uh, emerging brands there, and it's attracted some private equity interest. Um, and then you know in some of the other sectors that we spend time on, um, you know there are lots of exciting new concepts in the restaurant space, particularly in uh, the QSR segment. And you know, just a final question here, what kind of ways are you looking at exiting your companies? IPOs have been really hot right mm -hmm. now. Is that the main way that private equity is looking at exiting right now? I mean, does that, is, talk about that a little bit, if you could. You know, it's, uh, going public is a, it's a double-edged sword. Um, okay. You know, the, the, right now it's a great time to take companies public because, um, there are a lot of attractive valuations being afforded to companies coming out. It's, it's a very hot IPO market. Uh, the flip side is you need to have a management team that wants to live under the scrutiny of being a public company. Okay. Um, and we don't force our management teams to go one way or the other. And from a private equity standpoint, um, it's not the easiest way to get out of your investment, right? Um, if you sell, you obviously sell and you've cashed out, um, whereas uh, you have to sell over a series of time, right. a series of offerings, um, typically to get out of your position in, a, in an IPO. It, is going public so attractive that it's worth the challenges of, of 
you know, having to take time to exit from those investments or? That's a great question. Um, I, okay. I, I might have had a different answer eight months ago, but we okay. just took one of our companies public, a company called Chewy's. Um, it's a okay. restaurant, a Tex-Mex restaurant chain. Um, we took it public in August and uh, uh, the stock came out at $13. It's now trading at 33 something. Okay. Um, we've been able to sell virtually all of our ownership, which was a significant amount. So. Um, the valuation we're getting in the public market right now is pretty uh, attractive and I would argue significantly more attractive than we would have gotten if we, uh, if we had done a uh, private sale.